I want to share in this Bible study addendum some things that relate to what we've been studying the last few weeks. We've had gospel readings from Matthew's gospel as Jesus prepares to go to the cross. Chapter 16, Jesus said, when we help people in need, we help him. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus tells us we must have faith as a child, trust in him, the humility to rid ourselves of pride and thinking we can do it on our own, that we don't need anybody's help, that we need to have a child life faith. And then in today's second reading, we studied about Paul commanding us not to be anxious. These ideas, helping others, having faith in Jesus, and not being anxious are what I want to expand upon in this addendum. I told a fictional story a while back about a man who was given the opportunity on behalf of all the world to ask God one question. His question was, why does a loving God allow us so much hunger in the world? God's answer was, why do you allow so much hunger in the world? The statistics show that in the United States, the households in the top 10% of wealth own more than 70% of all the wealth in the United States. Another statistic shows that on a global basis, the top 1% of the wealthy obtained nearly two-thirds of all new wealth that was generated since 2020. I have nothing against people obtaining wealth. There are several scriptures that tell us God gives us the power to get wealth, an example being from Deuteronomy 8.18. Remember then the Lord, your God, for he is the one who gives you the power to get wealth by fulfilling, as he is doing even today, the covenant he swore to your ancestors. What God is saying to the man who asked him the question is, I have given you the power to get wealth. But I have also included in my covenant that you should help the needy. It's been calculated that the total wealth in the world is $464 trillion. We divided it among the 8 billion people in the world. A family of four is worth $206,000. That's a large sum even for the United States. And in countries with low income levels, that would be a fortune. Here's what that number looks like with all the zeros. So what am I saying? Christians have been given the gospel to share to the world. It means not just having people believe in Jesus as their savior, but to have them learn what Jesus taught and what the opportunities are for each Christian to be an important part of bringing the world closer to what God would have us be. What God is saying in his answer to the man asking about hunger in the world is that we have the wherewithal to alleviate hunger, poor housing, and most other issues that cause hardships in the world, if the world so chose. But as we know, Jesus said in Matthew 26, 11, the poor you will always have with you. And I guess it's partly because we will always have the very rich with us who are not Christian. As the inequality in wealth has been growing in recent years, it has an emotional impact. The feeling people have as they feel left out and that the concern for how they will continue working if their job goes away, along with also having anxiety about the rising cost of living, the impact social media is having on younger generations, the upside down nature of our political system and government, and all the other issues we face, most of which are humanity's own doing. This emotional impact has led to reporters and researchers commenting on how the pressures of society have created anxiety and insecurity in the population. Today, we studied this coming Sunday's second reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. In it, Paul commands us to not be anxious about anything. This does not mean you stop work or do it half-heartedly. You are an example of Christian behavior. You need to do your job in excellence. You still need to continue to do what God has given you to do. Just don't be anxious about it. Paul had to do what God gave him to do. He didn't just sit and wait for the Lord to spread the gospel. However, when he went out, the Lord helped him in his job. 
I recently came across two newspaper articles that focus on anxiety and insecurity. One was entitled Anxiety in the Age of Barbie, and the other, Why Does Everyone Feel So Insecure All the Time? I guess you could call these the gospel according to the secular world. In the first article, the author deals with the topic of how moms are coping with the anxiety felt by their daughters who are struggling with anxiety and depression. The one paragraph that really grabbed my attention was this. Adolescent despair has been copiously analyzed in recent years. The harm from social media, micro-targeting algorithms that inflame envy and conflict and divisive politics, unending school shootings, COVID sequestration, a planet devoured by flames and floods, a never enough achievement and consumer culture, anxious adults creating a jittery atmosphere, a digitally connected yet emotionally disjointed and spiritually unmoored society was the last three words of that sentence that hit the mark. We now live in a spiritually unmoored society. The author goes on to discuss how anxiety is not just with teenage girls, but is permeating all of society, and that medical science is attempting to remedy some of it through medication. The second article, Why Does Everyone Feel So Insecure?, deals with how the economic inequality leads to the emotion and feeling of insecurity. Insecurity is nothing new, but the author addresses a modern condition, generally unknown before the market-driven society came into being. The modern word insecurity did not come into widespread use until the market-driven society did. This created what the author calls manufactured insecurity. The capitalistic market-driven society thrives on bad feelings. Advertising is designed to tell you why you need what it is, what they're selling. They're never going to tell you that you are actually okay where you are. We are bombarded constantly with ads, and now in the age of technology, bombarded with social media that is constantly critical of who and what we are. We deserve a better car. We have to avoid the appearance of getting old with age-reversing face cream. We deserve a break today at McDonald's. To quote the author, manufactured insecurity facilitates exploitation and profit by waging a near constant assault on our self-esteem and well-being. This heightened level of insecurity today leads us, as the author says, to work hard, shop hard, hustle, get credentialed, scrimp and save, invest, diet, self-medicate, meditate, exercise, exfoliate. In this article, what caught my attention was the fact this manufactured insecurity encourages us to amass money and objects as surrogates for the kinds of security that cannot actually be commodified. Connection, meaning, purpose, contentment, safety, self-esteem, dignity, and respect. So in the first article, the author has pointed out we are a spiritually unmoored society. This analysis is truly a perspective of the secular world becoming unhinged, spiritually unmoored. Studying God's word and practicing what his word teaches brings believers the solid spiritual foundation needed to deal with the increased anxiety that the world is feeling. When we study God's word and renew our minds in alignment with God's way of thinking, we become spiritually moored. God's word spiritually moors us. We find the anxiety faced by the secular world is remedied by our faith in God's promise to provide protection and security because he will never forsake us nor leave us. The second article recognizes the things that the world needs but cannot obtain. Connection, meaning, purpose, contentment, safety, self-esteem, dignity, and respect. Secular world's response when these things are lacking is to amass money and objects. Study and belief in God's word actually provides these things. Our faith and trust in God satisfy these needs 
as we learn and follow the teachings from Scripture, our willingness to become as a little child and trust him, leaping in faith, knowing he will catch us, learning from his word that security cannot be obtained by amassing money and objects, and by rejecting anxiety in our lives, that the security of the living word of God is the solution and does provide us with connection, meaning, purpose, contentment, safety, self-esteem, dignity, and respect. <laughs>